Hi, doll lovers and lovers of American folk art and all things country. I have some wonderful dolls to show you today from the collection of Diane and Valerie Blackler of Southern California, two thoroughly modern young women who for 30 years sought American cloth dolls from both commercial makers and folk art makers and very, very fine uh, oil painted dolls. I'm going to show you examples from all of these categories today and just point out little features about them that I found especially endearing. Their collection numbers over 700 lots and I've just chosen a few of my favorites here today to show you. I wanted to start with one doll that in my opinion is probably um, a good symbol of all of the American cloth dolls that are homemade because it captures a lot of the things that have been so unique to America. First you, thing you look at it, what do you think? I think Raggedy Ann. Obviously it's not a commercially made Raggedy Ann, but certainly something that was inspired by the Raggedy Ann doll. Now one of the things we're going to find with cloth dolls all the time is that they are going to have features that you look at them and you say, well, is it homemade or is it commercial? What about it? One of the reasons this occurs, and I'm going to show you the top of this doll's head so you can see what I'm talking about. Look at this unique construction of the stitching on the top of the head. Very, very wonderfully done, clearly with a machine or with someone who had incredible tensile hand strength because it, the seam is so wonderful and very, very unique with a little bump here, a little bump there. When I turn it around, you can see the various shape of the head. Little crown bumps here, little back of the head bump, like a little baby might, might have their back of head bump until their crown closes in. And then look at the wonderfully painted features. This doll is absolutely charming. And a person went to so much trouble to have extra details like the whites of the eyes and then the shaded blue of the eyes and then the outline. Look at the mouth and then look at these little painted ears. They're just curlicules. That's all the person was able to accomplish, but so very charming. This is just hand drawn with like watercolors or inks on a very, very simple muslin with a beautiful old country dress. Our next doll to show you from the um, handmade simple country style is a black doll. Many of the black dolls that are found are, are of this simple kind of nature because they were made with found objects at hand, found materials that were easily available. In this case we have um, the black muslin cloth, we have the stitched in shoe button eyes because shoe buttons were certainly available at that time, and then we have wonderful details of the face like the embroidered mouth and the nose and the black wool cap stitched on with a lot of her hair being gone, but you can see the remnants of the black wool. And then this wonderful costume uh, pieced together from probably finer dolls at the time. You know, if you were a child growing up in America, say 1880 to 1910, we like to think of that you maybe were, came from one of the wealthier families and you had beautiful dolls brought into you from France and Germany, bought in very luxury shops. But the fact of it is that the vast bulk of American children at this time were not that at all. These American children were living out in small towns in the prairie, or they were living poor in the city, and they still wanted a doll, and their family would be determined to make one for them. And that's why we'll find so many of these wonderful, wonderful examples. While we talked about the Raggedy Ann influence a while ago, I wanted to show you some that are probably I don't know, these would maybe rank in my top 10 favorites from the Blackler collection. Not in the wonderful condition that like you would, when you search for your bisque dolls, they've got to be perfect, perfect. These dolls have had a life. They have, you look at them and when you see them, it's like they're, you're holding history in your hand. There is the mama doll and her two little children. And again, obviously influenced by the whole Raggedy Ann motif. Um, they have appliques sewn on noses and eyes and very, very simple muslin. But again, someone who stuffed this, they would stuff this with old rags. And to do that, there was so much strength and love that went into this. You wanted to make a doll for your child that they could love, that could be their own, that they would drag around, they would take to bed at night. And you used whatever materials you had at hand. And you may not have had the greatest artistry in the world because look at this hand, so out of proportion. Um, but that's, that's the beauty and the charm of these dolls. So I call this my little family of Raggedy Ann's. Also in the Raggedy Ann theme 
is this wonderful doll. And again, sometimes it's very, very difficult for me to tell if a doll passed between, was it commercial or was it handmade? Um, and this would be one of the dolls that I would have a little bit of question about. Perhaps this was a commercial doll, but as far as I know, it was homemade, one of a kind. I'm gonna turn it around, and if the camera can come in, you can see that the hair is almost like a fur-like hair. Very, very fine and silky fur. And then, when I turn it to the side, look at his profile. What a great nose. This is a great doll. He has a lot of character. His eyes were made with a very, very um, ingenious use of material. Whites were cut out, and then black shoe buttons put right smack in the middle of him. And then his little embroidered lips. And again, his very distinctively modeled body with big thumb and his wonderful costume in the Raggedy Ann mode. So whoever was making Grandma here was um, perhaps not the most artistically inclined person, but they had a desire to make a wonderful doll for their child to play with, and so they used material at hand, stocking at face from an old piece of stocking, worn with holes, and yet it was shaped, it was stuffed with cloth, the nose was embroidered around the edges of the nose in order to give some dimension and shape to the face. Um, and again, I'd like to show you the profile of the doll uh, because then you can see just how much characterization was brought into it. Please notice the chin line. Very, very lovely the way it's done. And when she comes around, notice that her eye sockets were actually cut out and then very neatly embroidered around the edge of the eye sockets with a little piece of fabric inside there to be the white of the eye and then the shoe button attached to it for the pupil. So a lot of work went into this, what looks like a very, very simple and crude doll. This little black child, and I, I don't know if the camera will be able to pick it up and sometimes I think whoever owns this is going to have to like hold it in their hand and look at it in order to really capture how absolutely wonderful it is. It's made up of black cotton sateen material, so it has a nice sheen to the complexion. And it has the sewn-on yarn wool cap, with again the hair being fairly sparse because the yarn has worn away, but it was all black yarn that was looped and made to look very, very realistic. And then the face, very, very daintily shaped nose and little tiny eyes with very delicate shading in the background, and then the tiniest, tiniest of little buttons right in the middle to be the pupil of the eye. Very, very sweet doll, and one you really have to see close, and I like to say you hold it in the palm of your hand, and it's kind of like holding history. You wonder who owned this doll, and um, what, was, what was its family background? You'd like to know. Another black doll that may well be one of my favorites in the auction, and another one that I have been a bit puzzled about as to whether it is handmade or whether it's commercial. Because features about it to me that are very, very commercial are her leather lower arms with beautifully, beautifully shaped fingers. And in addition, her lower leather feet with what appear to be sewn on boots. So very finely made of a black sateen material and in a beautiful costume that definitely is homemade, or handmade in the family with the embroidered collar and cap and you can see it all the way around. And now when I bring her here again, I want to point out to you that she also has the cutout eye sockets with the embroidery around the edging, the, the um, overcast stitching, the white pupils, the little um, painted, in this case, not shoe button eyes, but little painted black pupils. And did you see her nose is shaped? She actually has like this little um, crooked aquiline type of nose and her wonderfully painted mouth, painted mouth. Lots of different techniques could be used. Remember, in these homemade dolls, people were using found materials, things that were easily available to them. It might be a little touch of paint. It might be thread from embroidery. It might be a shoe button. It might be any of these things that they could use to create the doll. But this, again, one of, one of my favorites in the auction. Here is a very beautiful little girl. She has a flat, a flat dimensional face. And as many you're going to see, I'm going to take her hat and pull it back so you can see. She has a stitching all the way around. And once again, a doll that very difficult to determine 
Is it commercial? Is it handmade? Remember, and you're going to see when I show you some of the commercial dolls in, in a few moments, the distinction between handmade and commercial was very small because commercial very often meant someone's back kitchen where they were making dolls that were being sold in stores like Marshall Field, that type of thing. And they would commission perhaps 50 dolls from them. So these were not big industries, even the commercial. They were very, very small. And this one could be either commercial or handmade, hard to tell. And I put her in this handmade because I find that her hand-painted features are so very, very beautiful, very beautifully done, very dainty little face, little um, painting of the hair, shading of the eyes, thicker eyebrows than you usually would see. Another black doll, and this one is significant, I think, because it has an unusual use of the brown sateen, or brown cotton material, a brown muslin, and I'm going to turn her to the side so before we start talking, you can see the shape of her face as well. It's not flat dimensional. One of the things you learn to characterize very quickly in these dolls, or that I did, because I had the great opportunity of seeing hundreds of them um, laid out on tables, and you could start to pull comparisons together and see techniques that were being made. And one of the things you learn are totally flat dimensional faces, faces that have some dimension in them, faces that have stitching, or faces that simply rely on the painting or the application of found items like buttons to give character to it. Now here's a doll that has great embroidery on her face. If you please look at it, you can see the well-detailed outlined eyes, even, even embroidered eyelashes, which you hadn't seen on some of the others. So you look for all of these different features on the dolls and a little row of embroidered teeth. Very, very interesting doll. And she also has the black yarn um, cap with very tight little curls. 